Hey Business Warriors, welcome back to the show and if you've been reading the news for the past couple of weeks, you may have seen article after article talking about the dangers of inflation. But is inflation really coming? Will it be bad for you and what can you do to protect yourself from it? In this episode, we'll be answering all those questions. But first of all, very quickly, let's establish exactly what inflation is. According to Investopedia, it's the decline of purchasing power of a given currency over time. Basically, a dollar this year will be worth more than a dollar next year. Let's say you're shopping for a new house and you see one on the market for 200,000 US dollars. Well, next year, you may see a house with exactly the same specifications hit the market for 210,000. Basically, next year, you can't buy as nice a house with that $200,000. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let me ask you a question. In the 1960s, what do you think the price was of the following? The hourly minimum wage, a gallon of gas, a first class US postage stamp, the cost of an average home, an ounce of gold, and the average price of the Dow Jones stock index in the year 1960. Here's some cheesy elevator music while you think about that. And the answer is $1, 31 cents, $0.04, cents, $16,500, $35, and $625. And at the time of creating this video in the year 2021, those prices have risen to $7.25, $2.72, $0.55, $269,000, $1,723, dollars and $31,589. As you can see, the price of everything has been getting more expensive since the 1960s with the price of gold and stocks outpacing everything else. So who benefits from inflation? Well, the answer is simple. People who buy financial assets and people who take on low interest debt to buy real estate are the two main beneficiaries. But I thought taking on debt was bad. Only irresponsible people borrow money from the bank to buy things they can't afford. Well, that depends. Let me illustrate why low interest debt is a good hedge against inflation by first of all explaining who inflation hurts. Inflation hurts savers and bond investors the most. Going back to those previous examples, the price of a house, in the 1960s, if you had saved $16,500, which was enough to buy a house back then, well, congratulations. Now you have enough to buy a secondhand Subaru. As for bond investors, well, you can see from this chart that the 10 year US Treasury is now only yielding 1.4%. So what does that mean? If you buy a 10 year US Treasury bond, you are lending money to the US government for 10 years and they will pay you 1.4% per year. So for example, if the annual inflation is 3%, you're actually losing 1.6% per year. Not to mention you have to pay taxes on that 1.4% income you get. So technically you're losing more than 1.6%. So as you can see, inflation in the long term slowly erodes the value of your money, thus harming savers. So if inflation harms savers and lenders, it must benefit the opposite, right? That is correct, it benefits debtors. So let's say that your mortgage is $1,000 per month and in 20 years time, the minimum wage has risen to $25 per hour. Well, paying off a $1,000 a month mortgage on a minimum wage of $25 per hour would be a piece of cake, right? You see, the value of money is eroding year after year and so that also means that the value of your debt is eroding at the same pace because it is a fixed dollar amount. It doesn't increase in price like other assets like gold or stocks do. So let me repeat that one more time. In addition to eroding the value of your money, inflation also makes debt cheaper. You get what I'm saying here? So I hope you're beginning to see how long-term debt with low interest can benefit a lot from inflation. But let me add in one more cherry on top because you're gonna like this. Let's say you not only borrow money to buy your own house to live in, but you also borrow money to buy a house to rent out to tenants like I'm gonna be doing with my future Airbnb. We did a video on that last video, do check it out. Now, did I mention that the value of debt does not increase with inflation? Oh yeah, I think I did mention that. But you know what does increase with inflation? rent prices. According to Statistia.com, the average rent price in the year 1980 was only $308. Yes, 308. 
That means that mortgages for the same rental property were likely lower than $300 back then. So as rent prices climbed every year while mortgage rates stayed the same, the landlord is pocketing the difference as rent prices climb higher and higher and higher. How cool is that? And with mortgage rates as low as they are these days, it's almost free to borrow money. So what causes inflation? Well, we can categorize inflation into two types, good inflation and bad inflation. Good inflation occurs when the economy is doing well, companies hire more people, the unemployment rate goes down, people have more money, so they buy more things, and gradually stores just put their prices up because people are spending more money and they have the money to spend on those things if the prices rise a little bit. Then employers need to offer higher wages to adapt to the higher cost of living in order to attract new workers because unemployment is low so there's competition between companies and then they have more money and gradually the stores again raise the prices a little bit more this can be called good inflation and what about bad inflation well think about world wars one and two when the government didn't have enough money to finance the war they went ahead and printed money you may have seen pictures of the weimar republic in your history textbook Money was so cheap that it was more efficient to heat your home by burning it than by using it to pay for your heating bill. Now in the US in the 1960s and 1970s there was inflation but it was not as crazy as Germany's hyperinflation between the world wars but nonetheless it could be regarded as high inflation. So the question on people's minds now is are we heading towards inflation? Well outside of the Great Depression there has always been around 2% inflation. But is inflation going to head into the 5 to 15% range as we saw during the 1970s? Well, some economists think that with all the stimulus we've pumped into the economy over the past year, that will trickle down and become inflation. Get that money printer going and we'll buy everyone Lamborghinis. Some economists believe that after the pandemic subsides, all that pent up demand will explode consumer prices. On the contrary, other economists don't agree with that. They believe that without stimulus, many businesses would lose money, go bankrupt, people would be unemployed, and there would be less money being spent in the economy, and that would all cause deflation. So you need stimulus in order to balance it out and stabilize the economy. So what do I think will happen? Well, if we go back to the years 2008 and 2009, when the federal government was throwing money at everyone on Wall Street, you know, like the mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, buying mortgage-backed securities, bailing out the banks and car companies, purchasing US bonds. Many people were under the impression that we would see a high level of inflation. But if you look back to 2009, the prices of many things, except for housing prices, are not that much higher today. Most of that newly printed money went to financial assets rather than milk and eggs. So it's no wonder that the US bond market, US stocks, and gold are at all-time highs. But I personally think that if they're able to offer just the right amount of stimulus this time, we will be able to keep inflation under control. But the key word is if, because you never know whether they're gonna pass some crazy bill and flood the economy with some insane amount of money. It's very difficult to say at this point, but it does remain something you should be concerned about and think about how to protect yourself from. But on this channel, we don't give predictions, apart from the March 2020 bottom of the market call. <laughs> But my hope is to offer you the very best information in order to protect you and your loved ones from financial disaster. So what can you do to hedge against inflation? Well, the first thing you need to do is to subscribe to this channel because in the next video, I'm gonna be giving you a concrete way to hedge against inflation and protect yourself from it. Second thing though, is that you're gonna need a brokerage account. So you might as well sign up for and get two free stocks from Weeble for opening an account. Guys, look out for our next video on how to protect yourself and profit from inflation coming up for you next week. Please subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.